one of the 16 special tournaments held on Club WPT for a chance to compete against each other under the bright lights for amazing prizes. Make your poker dream a reality. Sign up at clubwpt.com today. Had to be in U.S. currency, mm -hmm. and those three trades were thirty bucks higher than the market. It was the weirdest thing. Like someone made the trades to win a bet. <laughs> so we discussed it, and uh, we just decided to cut it in half. Okay. And I gave him back half. That's um, fair. Yeah, and and if it was the other way, you know, we would have probably decided to go to uh, a group of eight. We go pick four, and he picks four poker players, and they decide. Just because it was so sure, ambiguous. Sure. In the future, we'll pick which exchange Plus, we should use. He just had a baby, so you have to like, you got to give. That's him why money. he got the buyout. And he tried <laughs> to get the buyout even lower because he's having a baby. Yeah. I was like, Chris. And then, and th <laughs> then he final table something the next week. So all of a sudden we have Daniel Weinman uh, three betting the five nine offsuit here. So we have Tyler who opened the button with king nine suited. This is a strong hand three handed, and Daniel picking the five nine offsuit in the big blind to three bet. Well, I think what he's thinking right now is that he could take control of the non aggressive side of this. You know, uh, maybe he could bubble play Tyler a little bit. This is certainly uh, based on game flow, not based on the strength of his hand. Right. Tyler putting out a call here with King-9 suited as he should, and we're going to see these two top pros go to a flop. Now, Daniel's never doing that with Ace-King. It's just standard for Tyler there to not worry about Ace-King. I mean, he really hasn't been that far out of line. It's I certainly part of Daniel's range. However, I think King-9 suited is a strong enough hand where if you were folding, considering you're opening so many buttons, right. it becomes profitable now for Daniel to three-bet any two cards. Whereas you would give a lot more respect to... Um Nathan, if, he if did Nathan that. had three bet me, yeah. I, I probably would be ditching the king. You're not doing great against Nathan's three bet range, I don't think. I'm just trying to point that out to the people listening. That mm -hmm. you, know, you can't go wrong listening to the advice that these two people are giving. So Daniel three bets and checks this board. Tyler now considering a bluff. All uh, he really has is two over cards. He can go runner runner straight. Do you well, think that's a strange um, decision not to see bet by Daniel? Well, I think no, Daniel. I, I think a I check like raised by Daniel. You think Daniel Tyler's range huge. includes like a lot of? Uh, I would. I would be check calling this all day. And in fact, okay. it, this is a board where, remember, these players are a hundred big blinds deep. This mm -hmm. is actually a board that favors Tyler's range more than Daniel's. As Daniel probably isn't three betting hands like pocket fours, pocket fives, right. um, maybe not even pocket eights. Whereas all of these hands are in Tyler's range. Mm -hmm. So this is a board where I would, in fact, if I'm Daniel, I'm looking to check with most of my range on this board. I would probably check all over pairs and ace king and the hand that I have. Okay. That card doesn't help at all. Finding out on the stream, I see bet too much. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone calls a C bet. You got to bet the turn. That's the real spot yep. now. It changes if you're like 35 big blinds mm -hmm. deep when you're happy to just bet aces and get it all right. in. But what happens when you right. bet Right, yeah, aces you're not trying to get 100 you, big blinds in with one raised. pair right here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how I felt about the ace five of diamonds he led. I thought that's a good check call spot, and he got thin value out of it to his credit. Um, I probably wouldn't have gone for it and made less money. It looked like Tyler was putting together trips for a bet, now reconsidering. What does this mean to you, Dave, when he was about to put out a bet? Weak, weak. This is weak. Yeah, I mean, I've actually had in tournaments where I've moved two big stacks out in front, or three big stacks out in front, then pulled them back and checked with the nuts. And the guy just pounded on me, and I was wow. like, I call, yeah. So jockeying with your chips is usually, you know, a weakness. It's it's legitimate. It means you're actually reconsidering the bet. Uh, no, usually I'm. I think they're doing it to make you think that uh, to slow you down from betting when they check. He actually went back and put the bet in. Well, here's another. Here's an interesting thing. He. The the bet size here. Not relative to the pot, but the actual bet size. The fact he threw in an extra blue chip on there. That's like almost psychologically, like he's trying to make it look a little more expensive, right? Yeah. Or, or just like, I'll just throw this on top too. I don't care what I bet. I have the best hand. You know? So you would read this as weak? 
And what he just did, I would read as, t as, as strong. As strong? That, that, that extra okay. chip, yeah, too. Um, and he even went back and made the bet. If he would have checked after playing with his chips, I would have known he, you know, he's got king high, and he, and he just doesn't want me to blast. Wow. I mean, after after Daniel made, like, the motions and was, like, smiling or whatever, that looked like it was going to be a fold, didn't didn't it? Like, it looked like he was like, ah, ha, ha, fold. And then he just, like, made all these motions and then called. Like, I really was not expecting that at all. I thought the hand was just over then. And Tyler doesn't look very happy, and he just touched his face, pacifying <laughs> himself a little bit, you know? I just think it's very strange. Like, it's, it's not often that people have, like, an exchange, like, gestures and all that, and then continue with the hand. Such a big pot at such a big time. And he was almost saying, I, I don't have much, but I got to call you. Now, that's really yeah. didn't change uh, that much. I mean, it's really, Daniel is, is holding on to those pairs and winning hands, the ace deuce, and, and right now he hit the five. His only fear is if the guy has, uh, if Tyler has an eight, you know, the 10 and the three shouldn't really play into the hands that much. So it looks like Tyler is carving out chips not for his bet size, but rather to size up his own stack and to see how many chips he has left. Tyler has less than a pot size bet left. There's about 11.4 million chips in the pot. Tyler has 10.7 million chips behind, and he's he shoves all in. Oh, what do you think Nathan's doing right now? <laughs> Throwing a party in his mind. That's what I was yes, doing. Yes, he's saying, how did this happen? I only have five million. And it always happens. It's going to be very hard for Daniel to find this call. If he does, it's just, it's just, he, then he saw his cards. <laughs> I mean. If Daniel makes this call, then he's my hero. He's his hero or cheating. Uh, he's definitely not cheating, you know, if anybody thought that was a reference. Uh. Now, the, what's going through Daniel's head is, is Tyler shoving all in? Is that the bet size he's going to choose he with his value hands? In other words, if Tyler right. happened to have a hand like pocket fours, pocket eights, six, seven suited, is he now going to shove all in? The other thing going through Daniel's head is, is he going to do this with hands? Was he betting the flop with hands like jack nine, queen jack, all these hands, uh, queen nine, hands that turned equity? Exactly. And also an important consideration is when he does just have the king nine, no pair, no draw, is he turning that, is he, is he bluffing three barrels in this way? I mean, does he have six, seven? Did he just flop it on me? What other hand can you barrel everything on? Do you have a set? Somehow he had eight, 10, hit two pair. I mean, the hand doesn't really make sense, but Daniel only has a five. Also, Tyler would probably play ace-deuce this way. Um, if I had ace-deuce in, in Tyler's shoes, I would be betting flop and turn. Uh, the other thing that I would be thinking if I were Daniels, I do have a nine in my hand, which reduce some of the bluff combos of Tyler. If we can assume that Tyler is, is only betting the turn when he does have equity with hands like Jack nine or Queen nine, or perhaps seven nine suited, um, the fact that Daniel has a nine reduces some of those combos. And the fact that Daniel is, is thinking about this. And well, now, da 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 Daniel three bet pre-flop, so he's trying to wonder if Tyler is, like, just putting him on an ace-king type hand, too. But no matter what he thinks, this is just too hard of a call to make for so much right now. A minimum of a $200,000 call if he makes it. And without seeing Tyler Kenny, uh, you can tell he's related to Bryn by this hand. Absolutely. <laughs> Call. Oh my oh god. My god. That's incredible. What an unbelievable call by Daniel. That's incredible. Wyman. Daniel is my new hero. Wow. Daniel shows nine five. Nice call, Daniel. Nice call, Daniel. That is nice call. incredible. Well at this final table. Nice call. Daniel. And Nathan. Wow, Tyler, you handled that very well. Just me. You know, you might be the best poker player in your little home game, but can you prove yourself on TV? Vince, ClubWPT.com is qualifying 16 players to show off their poker skills on television and contend for an awesome grand prize. That's right, Mike. The lucky Club WPT winners will compete against each other under the bright lights where they will receive unparalleled VIP treatment and shine like a TV star. Show us you have what it takes to compete on the World Poker Tour stage. Sign up at ClubWPT.com today.